Welcome to chapter six. In this chapter, I'm gonna give you a run through on how Blender handles materials, lighting, and rendering. On the rendering front, we're gonna be looking at two different render engines. The default Blender internal engine, which is a scanline engine uh, that is pretty feature complete. It's been around for quite a while and has a lot of different uh, feature sets. It's not very, it's not generally a realistic engine, but has a lot of tools that you can use to get exactly the result that you want, whether that's realistic or very stylized. Next, we have the Cycles Render Engine, which is relatively new. It is a physical-based render engine that is heavily under development, but is feature complete enough to be, to be usable and has now been included in the last two version of Blend, versions of Blender, and it relies heavily on a node-based shading workflow for a very flexible system uh, for getting pretty realistic and accurate results. So first and foremost though, let's go ahead and look at the camera in Blender to get an idea on how it handles it so that you can then set it up for your renderings. So for this, I'm using my sample car model here that I, that I modeled recently. And let's choose our camera. So our camera object can be selected like any other, obviously from the outliner or the 3D view. When you select it, then you can go over to your camera properties here and choose any of your normal settings between perspective, orthographic, panoramic, your focal length, your shift, your clipping, uh, camera presets, you know, all the fairly typical stuff. Uh, we have, do have depth of field as well, depending on the engine th that you're using. Uh, this is, you know, tied right into cycles. It's not generally, or it's not used directly in the Blender internal engine, but it can be used in the compositing system for post-production and then various things like this. But mostly I want to look at how to position the camera in Blender. So first first of all, hitting numpad zero will take you into camera view. Within camera view then, if you hold down shift and middle click, you can pan the view. If you zoom, you can just zoom the view. Now you're not actually zooming the camera, just the view. But if you rotate around, you immediately leave the view. Um, this is the, the first thing that a lot of people notice that is a bit challenging initially for working in uh, Blender for setting up the camera, is that when you're in camera view, you want to be able to just position it exactly. Well, if you prefer to do this where panning and rotating actually changes the actual position of the camera, not just the viewport, then simply hit in to bring up the properties panel, go over to the view section and choose lock camera to view. Once you do this, the camera will stay exactly in place and then you can just position your camera uh, exactly like you want it, you know, using rotate around selection or the origin uh, or whatever your settings may be to then quickly position your camera how you choose. Now be aware though that uh, this will stay on until you disable it. So if you suddenly decide, oh, I wanna rotate around my scene to work on this and you're still in camera view, then you're gonna change your camera view. So disable this, then you can manipulate around your view again and you'll be good to go. So that's the basics of the camera. Uh, one other tip that I'll give you just for working with the camera easily. Uh, sometimes this, this works great, but is not necessarily ideal at all times. And so personally, my favorite, uh, the two things that I like to do within the 3D view, first of all, zooming the camera uh, while you're in camera mode, as long as the camera is on the current layer that you're on, or at least in the visible layers, you can select the camera by just right clicking on it set on the outline here and it'll show up as selected then. And then what you can go ahead and zoom the view very easily by just hitting G and then middle click and drag or just middle click and that will set the local Z axis or you can simply hit G and then Z Z to zoom along the local Z axis like this. You can also rotate directly from the camera view and uh, scaling doesn't do anything. That's just the display size, which you can also find uh, right in here for size. Uh, but the other thing that I like to do is I like to make use of the 3D cursor. So if I just wanted to rotate the camera around to the front view, but keep my same camera tilt and things like that, then I can simply set my pivot point to the 3D cursor, hit R and Z, rotate around the Z axis, and that allows me just to rotate around that point very quickly and easily. Uh, and so that's my preference, but you do also have the lock camera to view if that's the way that you prefer to work. And you know, both of them work very, very well. Uh, one other thing to note on the rotating around the cursor is 
I believe I showed this to you in previous videos, but if I didn't, uh, that is the uh, the free or trackball rotation that you can activate by double tapping R to go into rotate mode allows you to then just rotate around like this. So that's it for the camera. Uh, pretty straightforward to the point. One, I guess actually one last thing on the camera. In the case that you happen to have multiple cameras, so if I just add in another camera here, position it, say something like this, and then I want to change the camera that my scene is going to use for rendering, you can just go over to the scene properties, choose the camera, and then that will then set the active camera to the one that you choose. And of course I've got lock camera to view on, and so I can just position it like this, and move on. And actually, one last thing that I wanna show you is how to track your camera to a point. So oftentimes, you're, you don't wanna worry about the framing or anything like that. You just want your camera to always point at the object that you're working on. The way that you can do this is with a constraint. So if you go over to the constraints panel here, choose add constraint and track to right here, you can then specify any object. You can specify any one of the existing objects or if you want to have a arbitrary point, you can simply hit shift A, choose an empty as a reference object, and you can see it's named empty. Select your camera, go back to the constraints, choose empty, and it will now always track to that empty. Now you can see right now, it's using the incorrect axis, so we can set the axis that we want to use, which in this case is gonna be the Z axis, which then immediately conflicts with the up, so let's just set the up to to y but you can see that's then facing away so we'll set negative z and then it points to the correct axis and now if i move my camera around it's always going to point at that empty if i select the empty it will also follow that empty so it works really well if you want an aiming system or you know use this in conjunction with your animation or whatever you want to do. The handy thing too is that this also does have an influence slider. So if you wanted to use it with an animation and you know only influence part of the time or anything like that, that also works quite well. Uh, so for tracking your camera to the empty. So that's it for the camera. Now let's jump in and start looking at the two render engines.